problems from the 2014 AP Physics B exam. Although it is AP Physics B, it's still appropriate to review this for the AP Physics 1 Mechanics Unit. This problem is heavily involving mechanics. We've got an individual swinging off of a platform. Uh, let's read the information. Starting from rest at point A, a 50 kilogram person swings along a circular arc from a rope attached to a tree branch over a lake, as shown on the figure. Point D is the same height as point A. Point D is the same height as point A. The distance from the uh, point of attachment to the center of mass of the person is 6.4 meters, the length of the pendulum. We're going to ignore air resistance, the mass, and the elasticity of the rope itself. Uh, let's start it off. On the first swing, so the person's going to swing back and forth two times, each time letting go at two different spot or at a different spot. So on the first swing, the person lets go of the rope when they arrive at point C. We want to draw a solid line to represent the trajectory, the center of the mass the person releases the rope. So when they're swinging, they start off here at point A with potential energy. They're going to get to this bottom spot with their maximum kinetic energy. It's where they're going the fastest. They start to slow down until they get all the way over here to point D, where it's once again only potential energy. So they actually have no motion at point D. They're going to momentarily stop and then come back. So if they're swinging forward when they get to point C and they let go, at that spot they're still traveling tangent to that path. So they're going to kind of move up a little bit before they start to fall down and travel parabolically back here to the water. So that green solid line is the answer to A1. A2, the second time they go by, they're going to let go at point D instead. Now we want to draw a dashed line representing the their mass, I'm sorry, representing their trajectory when they let go here. And again, as I said before, at point D they're only potential energy, which means they have no motion. So when they let go, they're just going to fall straight down. So that magenta dashed line is, there, is the answer to A2. Um, on the actual exam when this was given, this exact part was worth three points. So if you could do this, you get three out of your 15 points right away. So, very important here, right? B, the center of mass of the person standing on the platform at point A, 4.1 meters above the surface of the water. We want to know the gravitational potential energy when they're at point A relative uh, to when the person is at the surface of the water. So basically, what is this potential energy from the platform all the way to the water? So ignore the fact that there's a little hill over here. We're talking that potential energy at a height of 4.1 meters. So for my work for B, I'm going to do up here. I'm going to, I like to make a knowns list first, so I'm going to go ahead and say that the mass of the individual is 50 kilograms. We know that they have a height of 4.1 meters. There's the acceleration due to gravity. That's why there's potential energy in the first place. I'm going to treat downward as negative as positive. So I'm just going to keep this as positive 9.81 meters per second squared. And to make my math easier, I'm going to treat g as 10 meters per second squared. I'm going to do that for all of my problems. Potential energy is what I'm looking for. The potential energy due to gravity is going to be equal to mgh, which will be equal to 50 times 10 times the 4.1. Get my math out here. Uh, with a total potential energy of 2,050 joules. And that's if you use G is 10, of course. If you use 9.81, it's going to be a little bit less. Uh, this whole problem was actually only worth two points. So again, A, 1, and 2 total combined was worth three points, and B was worth two points. Let me clean this up a little bit so I have more room for my other parts. C. The center of mass uh, of the person at point B, in terms of where they are above the water, is 2.4 meters. 
we now want to know the speed of the individual here at point B. And if you recall, that's where we're going to have maximum kinetic energy. Now, that doesn't mean we have no potential energy. In this case, we do still have potential energy. It could fall farther. It's just the lowest point that they will fall in this particular part of the problem. I'm going to keep the same knowns from up top. I'm going to recognize now, though, that there's a little bit of a difference here. This is my potential energy due to the ground. We might be better off finding out my initial potential energy due to point B from point A. So, the way I'm going to look at it is the kinetic energy at point B needs to equal the potential energy at point A minus your potential energy at point B. Or, if we were to set it up in terms of conservation of energy, your total energy in the beginning, that potential energy at A, needs to equal your total energy to the end. At the end we have both Ke and Pe. This turns out to be Mg times the quantity of HA minus HB. I'm not sure why I decided to make capital H here. I should have stuck with my original variable of lowercase h, which I'll just change in the next part. So I'm going to deal with that 50, and I'm going to still use 10 for the acceleration due to gravity. But now I want to take my absolute difference in height from where I started to where I'm finishing, not the surface of the water. And so that's going to be the original 4.1 meters that I used up above. Now I'm going to go ahead and subtract my new height above the water, 2.4 meters. And let me go ahead and do my handy dandy math. And I'm going to get an energy here of 850 joules. Now that's just the kinetic energy. That is not my final speed. However, I can find my final speed. So recognize that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So the speed at that spot is going to be 2 times my kinetic energy divided by m, and I need to take the square root of all of that. So it's the square root of 2 times 850 joules divided by the mass of the student, 50 kilograms. You get a velocity of 5.83 meters per second. Part C here was worth a total of 3 points. T. Well, let me clean this up. It's starting to get a little, a little too much. Suppose the person swings from the rope a third time, letting go of the rope at point B now. We want to calculate the range of the horizontal distance moved from where the person releases the rope at point B to where they hit the water. Uh, this turns into a projectile motion problem. If we were to look here right at point B where they let go, their velocity is completely horizontal or tangential to their uh, position. As soon as they let go, they're going to start that parabolic dive down to the water. So part D uh, is a classic projectile motion problem, which fortunately we only have x velocity. Remember when we deal with projectile motion with the separator y dimension from our x dimension, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to indicate that my initial x velocity stays constant, so that's actually going to also equal my final x velocity. It's going to be 5.83 meters per second. I'm going to treat the left as negative. I do not know my distance in the x, which is r. 
I also don't know the time that I'm traveling in the air. I'm gonna need that. Initial y velocity is zero. The acceleration due to gravity is what's pulling us down, so that's gonna be negative 10 meters per second squared. And at point B, the distance above the ground is the distance given in part C, which is 2.4 meters. And again, I'm treating uh, down as positive, so I should also treat my acceleration due to gravity as positive. Positive 10 meters per second squared. And I only need three variables in any one dimension to solve for all the rest. Uh, so I have enough, especially if I recognize that in the x dimension, a sub x is zero. There's no acceleration in the horizontal axis. So my first job is to solve for time using my y variables, because time exists in both dimensions. It's that scalar term. I'm going to utilize delta dy is equal to viyt plus one-half gt squared. Fortunately, this won't be a quadratic because viyt turns to zero. T ends up being the square root of two delta dy over g. Which ends up being the square root of two times 2.4 Can I have your attention, please? Dustin McKinley, your ride is outside and waiting. Dustin McKinley, your ride is outside and waiting. So the square root of 4.8 over 10. Which is 0 0.69 seconds. Which is not my final answer, of course. It's just the time it took to fall. So now I'm going to use that with my x uh, variables to show that the average velocity is equal to the change in distance over time. And because there's no acceleration in my x dimension, my average velocity is equal to my initial velocity. So that range I'm looking for, delta dx, is equal to my average velocity times time, or 5.83 times 0.69 seconds. giving us a distance to the left of 4.03 meters, or 4.04 .04 meters. I don't believe that we needed to indicate uh, left or negative or anything of that nature. We're simply looking for distance, so we end up not worrying about directional information. Part D was worth three points. All right, I'm gonna go clean this all up again. All right, and finally for part E. Uh, the person doesn't let go, and they basically swing through all the different points. And we want to compare the magnitude of the momentum at part C to the momentum at part B. And we're going to need to explain this as well. Now, momentum, P equals MV. Therefore, the momentum at part C, point C, is MVC, and the momentum at B is MVB. Well, we already stated and showed earlier that the individual is going the fastest they can possibly go at part B. That means during this whole motion, their momentum at part B will indeed be the largest. Momentum at part C will be lower, not only because B is the largest, but here at part C, um, where we've increased in potential energy, so our speed will absolutely decrease. So we're looking at checking the momentum at C is less than the momentum at B. And to justify this, you should discuss this relationship of mass and velocity for momentum. And make sure you clearly explain the, the velocity at B is larger than at C, therefore the momentum is larger. Uh, this was also worth three points. All right.
great problem. Again, this is from the 2014 exam.